life I deserve. Sharing creative ideas, inspirational stories, and fresh perspectives that will empower you to live your life to the fullest. Hi, I'm Jack Canfield, and you're listening to The Life I Deserve by my good friend, Adrian McMillan. Welcome to The Goal Show, brought to you by The Life I Deserve, and I am your host, Adrian McMillan, and I am honored to have today as a guest, Chris Neerum, who I met at Train the Trainer, Jack Canfield's coaching program, and He's already been a big inspiration to me, and I'm very, very proud to have him as a guest. Chris is a leadership and high-performance expert. He's an award-winning international corporate trainer, speaker, and get this, comedian who has the unique ability to create effective, entertaining, and impactful learning experiences. With proven leadership and quality systems and implementation experience, working with Fortune 50 companies to startups in the highly regulated medical device and life science industry. Chris is driven to empower you to realize your vision for yourself, your team, and your culture in a fun and impactful way. Welcome, Chris. Thank you, AJ, for having me on. It is great to have you here. So I would love for my audience to get to know what is Chris about? What's his story? And how did he get to be such a riot? <laughs> <laughs> uh, a lot of hard works. What a surprise. You know, you have to, you have to work at things. A uh, little bit about me. I'm, I'm a self-professed nerd. So if you ever come to see me do stand up, you'll see that's the first thing I say is I'm a nerd. I'll vouch I term, for that. I, I use the term nerd as opposed to geek because I was a nerd long before there was a geek chic. So just to be clear, <laughs> I, you know, I'm, I'm an, I'm an old school. That's why I go with the word nerd. Uh, look, I, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a goofball. I know that, but I'm also very, you know, kind of intellectual, you know, I'm, 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 I'm overly logical sometimes. So, uh, you know, that's what I tell everybody. I got my degree in civil environmental engineering, and then I quit to become a stand-up comic, which is where you ask me, mom, that's so hilarious because I did stand-up comedy in New York city. And if you want a testing ground to thicken your skin, do stand-up comedy in New York City. <laughs> there is almost there's nothing that I haven't heard people say to me that is going to that I haven't heard before. So I, really, nothing bothers me now. Uh, what's great about that is it develops very thick skin. So I'm not afraid of taking chances. I'm not afraid of failing. And that's one of those key things for people is you want to be able to do that. And then I became a school teacher <laughs> for the money. No. <laughs> I taught seventh to eighth grade math. I loved it. Then I met my wife and she messed up all my plans. You can laugh at that joke. She's heard me tell about 12,000 times. Uh, she was working as a project manager at a Fortune 50 company and they needed a corporate trainer. And I said, you know, I raised my hand and said, I can do that job. And that led to a career for what, 12 years now as a corporate trainer. Uh, and I actually won an award for it. Thank you very much. I feel very good about myself. Uh, I did win. We won a prestigious award for um, one of the implementations that we did at this Fortune 50 company. So I get to claim award winning. Thank you very much. Uh, so look, I got driven from doing corporate training and I found that uh, I was teaching very technical things, uh, software implementations, and I would embed all this kind of leadership training and kind of uh, how to be more successful, how to be a high performer into my trainings. And people go, boy, that was a great training. And I go, what was your favorite part? And it always ended up being the leadership, the high performance and the success stuff. And I said, hmm, maybe I should focus a little bit more of my time on that. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm really focusing on leadership and high performance. Wow. You know, Chris, I love all your diversity, all your skills, all your interests. And I love the way you put it all together. I actually, years ago, did improv, did classes at the Groundlings in Hollywood, and I, my goal was to be an actor, and I realized that using improv, being in the moment, helped me to connect with people wherever I was and whatever I was doing, and I feel that's what you're doing. You're like, you are able to cut through to people and connect with people in all these different ways, in all these different areas, 
because of your skills in comedy. And I've seen it. I've seen, you know, when we were at Train the Trainer, I, I, I saw it. You even gave us a demo and it was just amazing. Like you just, you feel this connection. Uh, well, I mean, long before I knew any of this, it's like when people are laughing, a lot of things, uh, good things happen, right? Well, their immune system boosts, their cortisol level, their stress hormones drop. But one of the other things that I did just inherently from when I started doing training was they remember things. So when you're laughing, you remember things. So, and believe me, I have done some rather cheesy jokes in some of my, some of my training. People are like, oh my God, that was awful. Remember when you, I have these little, little cowboys that would talk around a campfire and I'd have them talk like, well, you know, when you're doing your software implementation, Clam, and I would actually animate these, these guys around the fire and they go, God, that was the cheesiest thing I did. And I said, well, what were they saying? They were talking about software implementation. So you remembered it. And they'd be like, yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> that was the whole point. <laughs> so even if it's cheesy, people will remember it. I, I like to think that my comedy isn't necessarily cheesy, I, but I do like to throw in some goofy stuff. And besides, I just like to say funny voices. <laughs> it's an excuse for me to use funny voices. Well, yeah, you are definitely a memorable person. Yes, you you go to that extra mile of putting that extra content out there where so many people would stop themselves. They'd be like, yeah, you know, I want to make this more interesting. Maybe I'll do this. Maybe I'll make a little cartoon out of it. Maybe I'll say it in a funny way. Mm -hmm. And then they stop themselves and go, no, you know, people are just make fun of me. People won't see me as being professional. But you, it doesn't stop you. <laughs> well, you know, that's a good point. And I'm, I'm glad you brought that up um, because... This this is the advantage of having done stand-up comedy in New York is I have fallen on my face probably more than than the average seven people. Like, and that's what stand-up comedy and why I love doing it is because it it's an in that moment. You are either you're doing your job and you know it because people are laughing, or they're not, and you have to adjust. So what I challenge people is like, look, push the envelope a little bit. It, everything you want, like I I bet you've said this before, is outside your comfort zone. So you want to push it a little bit. You can always pull back, um, but you know, you, if, you, if you never push it, then you stay in that same spot. That's how people get stuck in a rut. And that's not what high performers do. High performers are always like, how do I do better? How do I push this? How do I make this even better, right? So for you, like taking an improv class, look, that's great. I would say that's, look, it's great for anybody to be in that moment and try to be, try to be funny or be funny or just play off of somebody in, the, in that moment. It's a very powerful skill if you're doing meetings, if you're dealing with your kids, <laughs> if you're doing anything. Being able to be present in that moment is a, is a great thing. So I, I, I'm glad that you've taken those classes, and I bet they were a lot of fun. So much fun. And uh, it, it didn't just help me in uh, a professional environment or with my friends, but also I have a bunch of nephews and nieces, and I was able to connect with them because yeah. they are in the moment. They're not thinking about, oh, am I going to look foolish or what's this going to mean? You know, how are they going to interpret this? It's just there in the moment. And like I, my relationship with all of them just became so much better because, because I was able to, we all have that kid inside of us. You know, no matter what age we are, we have that kid inside of us. Some of us, the kid is just a little closer to the surface than others. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but absolutely, look, look, you know, one of the things about kids, you know, kids, boy, that kid was brutally honest, is they don't have those kind of filters that we put on our, ourselves as we're adults. And it's a really good to about a childlike kind of mentality sometimes, right? That explorative, that, that kind of questioning, that curiosity. Kids are curious. And, uh, and I would encourage you, again, this is one of those things that, that I think is always important is curiosity. Go, why is, why am I, why am I limiting myself? Why am I thinking this? Why am I behaving, why am I behaving this way? Why am I getting upset? Be curious about it. Or why is someone else getting upset? And just go, hmm, this is interesting as opposed to reacting to it. Be more curious, be more childlike, not childish, just to be clear, <laughs> childlike. So I, I'm really glad that you brought up that point. Awesome. Were you always on the, the, the track of connecting with people through comedy? Or was there a point where it's like, this is it, and this is how I can connect, and this is what I'm going to do, this is what I'm going to pursue? You know, that's, that's such a great question. Uh, no, I wasn't always, like, I, look, I'm, I'm a middle child syndrome. I grew up in New Jersey, which is why sometimes I got a bit of an attitude, just in case you're wondering. <laughs> uh, I... I grew up and I was, like I said, I was a nerdy guy. I mean, a nerdy kid. Um, and 
Uh, well, the turning point for me was I had gotten my degree in civil and environmental engineering. And I was out playing football with my friends. And I actually ruptured my Achilles tendon. And I was up, I was in a cast above my thigh on my right leg. So I couldn't drive because that's the, you know, the one for the pedal, right? So I couldn't drive. And I had an older engineer had to, was taking me to drive. He had to pick me up and it was the winter and there's a short day. So he picked me up and it was dark and I would get my, you know, my crutches and crutch into his car, right? He'd drive me to work and I had a little tiny window and I watched the sun rise from my little cubicle. And then I watched the sun set from my little cubicle. I get back on my crutches, get in this car, drive me home. And about three weeks into that, I went, what am I doing? <laughs> like literally, I'm like, what am I doing here? Because that I was not passionate about. It. I'm good at math and science, but I wasn't passionate about it. I'm a people-oriented person, but that wasn't something that was necessarily uh, what was encouraged for me to pursue. And I remember sitting there and I go, all right, let me think about this. Five years from now, is this what I want to do? And I looked at the people who were five years down the road for me and I said, no. And I said, well, okay, what about 10 years down the road? No. And I said, 20 years down the road? No. And I went, why am I here? And so in that moment, that was the moment I went, you know what? I've, I've always been inclined to be fascinated with comedy. If I'm ever going to take my chance, now is the time. And so what I did is, and I don't recommend this necessarily for everyone else, is I quit my day job. <laughs> Most people with common sense, like engineers, you would think they would keep their day job and do the stand-up comedy at night. But apparently that's not my personality. I'm kind of an all-in person or I'm out. And so I quit my job. I uh, and you know, after my Achilles tendon healed, right, uh, hmm. I went into New York and I said, look, I'm gonna start doing comedy. And I, I got up on stage and I'll tell you right now, it was not uh, great. Right? I, I was so nervous. And the bartender behind the stage, uh, behind at the bar was a, was, um, a friend of mine this, to this day New York woman, you know, she was like, oh my God, first time. And I'm going, oh, like, <laughs> like, she, <laughs> like she couldn't she tell. Orders, <laughs> orders me a drink, a shot of tequila. I'm like, I, I don't drink. She goes, you do now. <laughs> <laughs> and so I shoot this shot of tequila. And remember, like, I'm really not, I'm, a, I'm truly a teetotaler. I mean, I very rarely drink. And she looks at me again. And she pours me another shot. And I'm like, seriously, I don't drink. She's like, shut up and drink it. Like, this is New York. This is, this is what kid. I drink it. She's, you're ready now. And she sends me on stage. And it was a blur. I, I really, I don't remember anything. All I know is that I survived it. And I walked off the stage. And that's one of the things that I would encourage people. It's like, look, if you're afraid of doing something, you should do it. Anything that you're, when you're going, oh, you know, I should, I'm afraid. Do it and find out that you will survive it. Like, I didn't die. I, well, I might have died on stage, but I didn't physically die. Exactly. Right? You know, there was a bit damage maybe to my psyche and my, you know, my whole, my whole, uh, you know, vision of myself as being a stand-up comic. But you know what? That's what it is. And then I got up and I did it again. And let's just say the first couple of times weren't great, but it was that drive to do something else. Like I'd always, I always loved comedy. I loved it and always had in the back of my mind that I wanted to do it, but I wasn't encouraged to do it. And it kind of took that moment of that realization of watching the sunrise and sunset to go, you know what? I want to pursue my dreams, my passions. And that's what got me to start doing stand-up comedy. Awesome. Well, kudos to you for just stepping up and, and doing that. It's the same way with me and, and like my dancing people. We actually have a, uh, an event. It's almost every Sunday uh, in Santa Monica on the promenade. There's street dancing. Mm. And so my friends and I, we get out there, we salsa dance in the street and people stand around and when I take a break, they're like, I always wanted to do that. And I'm like, just go do it. Yeah. Oh no, but I'm going to look foolish and, and people might make fun of me. And it's like, who cares? Just do it. Just take that action, take that step. And so that's great. And, and it's, you know, the, the world's going to help you. The world's going to tell you, you're going to get feedback if you just take that step you're going to figure out, ah, maybe this didn't work quite as well as I wanted. Maybe let me try something else. But we have to keep taking action. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. And look, uh, same kind of thing for me. When I people go, oh, I've always wanted to do STEM. I said, then do it. Oh, well, I don't know if I could. And, and, then, and then come the excuses, the reasons why not. And 
look, I, if I had something that, you know, one, a, one of those takeaways for people, like if I was going to encourage you to, to take us away something from this, uh, I would take us like, look, take the chance. Go do that thing that you've always wanted to do that you've told yourself you, you can't do or don't have the time to do or I have kids or I got a job or what are people going to think and do it anyway because what I found is when you're passionate about something and you're excited about it, all that other stuff goes away. And I'm I look, I'd love to say that every time I get on stage, it's <laughs> just a hair run and people are running and laughing in the street. Uh, it's, not the, it's not what happens. You have moments where you where you are in the zone and you know it, right? And and you too, you know this when you're speaking, when you're when you're talking to people or or even doing an interview, you know when you're in the zone and you know when you're not. And it happens. And the thing is, is I look at that and I just go, what is the feedback? So looping back on what you said, you get feedback. You get feedback and go, okay, what can I have, what can I do differently? How can I improve? And again, this is one of those things that high performers and leaders do is what they look at and go, well, how can I be better? What can I do to be better? Uh, and they, again, they keep pushing that envelope a little bit. So again, I would encourage everyone to do that thing that you've been putting off. They exactly. Both thought you wanted to do whether it's dancing, stand-up comedy, sculpting, uh, writing a book. Just start. Just get started, right? Get started and start working on it. Put some time and some effort into it, and enjoy while you're doing it. You know, it's that journey, right? It's the journey. Yeah. You know, they've interviewed um, people who were near the end of their life, uh, and they're they probably don't have much longer to live. And they interview them, and they've asked them what do you think about your life? Do you have any regrets? They never regret the stuff they tried. They regret the stuff that they've always wanted to do and they never even tried. Mm. You know? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, I, forget, I forget where I read it somewhere where it's like, you know, everybody has an unwritten book in them, right? Well, if your passion is to write a book, don't have it left unwritten or there's another one that don't live your, your song unsung. Like, look, this is what we're here for. We're here to live lives of passion, right? Stuff that gets us up and get excited. I got a friend of mine who always says, he, he always looks at people and when they go, you know, how are you doing? They go, living the dream. <laughs> like, have you ever heard that, Adrian? Yeah. Living the dream. Like, I would encourage you, if you ever said that in that kind of, you know, sarcastic way, like, go, wait a second, you can live the dream, right? You're talking about the life, the life that you should have, right? That's exactly that's what, that's what you're doing. Look, the way that you get that, and looping back to what Andrew said, is like, look, this is about taking action. You want the life you always want. One, one, what is it? <laughs> you have to you have to decide what that is for you. And two, take action. Those are the first two steps. Awesome. So you have your comedy, you have your career in the medical industry, the medical technology industry, and on top of that, you added Jack Canfield trainer certification. How? Tell me about that. Take me through that. How did you decide, okay, I want to not just excel in my career, connect with people through comedy, but I want to inspire and motivate them? Uh -huh. Well, after thinking about it, uh, really what came down for me is I really love to do two things right? for a living, I should say, you know, besides my family. Uh, I love to teach and I love to make people laugh. And those are the reasons that motivated me to go down this route is, look, I'm, 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 I'm without being too bold, I'm, I'm very good at doing technical training. I'm very good at it. And uh, but I found that it, I wasn't passionate about it. I was good at it. I was comfortable. Didn't have, I didn't have any stress. I remember I would go, <laughs> go walking. I'd go, how's everybody doing? Like, ah. Uh. And people would ask me and I'd go, oh, I'm doing great. And then people were like, huh? Like, you know, because I was working at these corporate jobs because for me, I was doing something that was easy for me. I got paid well for it, right? And I enjoyed teaching. But I wasn't passionate about it. It was a very comfort, it was very much in the comfort zone for me. So going through the training for, with Jack is I wanted to up-level my game. Again, that, that idea of improvement. Like, what can I do to be better? And I, I saw Jack speak an, at a conference for an hour, and I was like, wow, that's some really good stuff. And 
I got so motivated and so passionate that I bought his book and I bought his CDs. And then I let him sit on my, my uh, uh, bookshelf for a year. Mm -hmm. Anybody can relate to that? I'm so excited about it. But hey, you know, life got in the way, right? Uh, and then what happened was I, I really started thinking about it. And, I, and I, one morning I was making breakfast for the kids and preparing their lunch. And I'm like, you know, I should do something with time. And I popped in, you know, the success principles from Jack. And his first concept is taking 100% responsibility for your life. And I literally, like, he, he slapped me. <laughs> like, like, I'm listening to that, you know, on the little CD player. And it was like, he reached out and slapped me in the face that morning. I'm like, what? And I realized that, that this is one of those things that maybe I was missing. That why I wasn't, I was happy, I was comfortable, but I really wasn't pushing myself. And I wasn't living necessarily a life of passion as far as my career was going. Mm -hmm. And that's what was the catalyst. I, 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 I listened to the success principles for six months straight. Every time I had a free moment, I was working out, going to work, commuting, coming back from work, commuting. I listened to it for six months straight and I realized this is the kind of work I want to do. And then I, I saw him at his one day workshop. <laughs> I love this. And then he talks about his train the trainer program. Right? And I'm sitting there like, oh man, I want to go. But I'm with my wife and I'm like, you know, it, you know it's not cheap to go through this training program and well worth it, by the way. Um, so plug for Jack Canfield. Right? And I'm like, how am I going to talk my wife into it? And my wife elbows me. She gives me one of these and she goes, Chris, you should do that. And I'm like, sweet. It was her idea. So that's how it all kind of came together. Uh, and I went through the training. And I, I have to tell you, uh, I've been embedding that, that training into whether I'm doing something that's extremely technical in the medical device or whether I'm talking to leaders or I'm talking to my kids. I've embedded these principles and these ideas into my training, as I'm like, I'm sure you have. Exactly. You know, I, I feel like I can relate with you in so many ways. Um, not just that I used to take improv classes, um, but also my engineering background as well. And I feel like with an engineering background, we like to have some concise steps, some processes that actually just work. Mm -hmm. And for me, when I found Jack Canfield's material years ago, yes, it was these simple concepts and backed up with true inspirational stories. And, I, and, and then I would like, okay, I'll try that. And it worked. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, okay, I'm going to go to Breakthrough to Success and took me to another level. Mm -hmm. And then, like you, heard about Train the Trainer. Okay. I heard about the price tag. <laughs> right. You're like, okay. Whoa. Right. It took a while to, 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 to think about that and to try to get comfortable with that. And yes, it took my life to another level. And yes, just as you pointed out, I mean, it's, it's those little nuggets of information, those little tools are sometimes like a slap in the face. And, and they were for me as well. And, and I want to slap other people in the face <laughs> with these tools. We, we want to slap people in the face, people. That's right. <laughs> So come and, come and get some coaching from us. We're going to slap you in the face. That's right. So anybody listening, <laughs> you need a good slap in the face. Contact Chris or myself. <laughs> do that for you. No, but, it's, but it's true. Look, sometimes <laughs> here's a, here's a point I would like to, to make people. It's like a lot of people wait for that moment, right? That, that low point, that nadir, you know, I've hit this lowest possible point and then they rise up like the Phoenix. And what I want to really encourage people is you do not have to wait till you get a diagnosis or bankruptcy or some other catastrophic event in your, to change your life. Because that's what happens is uh, we get in this mode where I'm comfortable, like I'm comfortable and, and maybe even competent, right? I'm, I'm good at what I do and I'm comfortable. And why should I complain? It's not about complaining. It's about what you want and what you're passionate about. I mean, that's the difference is pushing yourself Pushing yourself and say, how can I be better? How can I do better? How can I have more impact in the world? Uh, one of the key things that, that I'd like to kind of share is it's intention. Right? It's intention. What's your intention? When you go into a meeting or when you have a dialogue with your spouse or your kids, what's your intention? And when you think about what your intention is, it can dramatically, dramatically change the way that you behave. And I could give you an example with my kids. Like, did I tell you today? a little bit under the weather and my kids were doing what they normally do. And I started getting, I started getting tested. 
that is that is started getting a little testy. I'm like, you know, you guys aren't listening to me. And I went, Rip! and I said, wait, what is my intention? My intention is to inspire my kids, to empower them. And it was about me and how I was responding to, to a certain event or stimuli. The kids were behaving this way and I was responding in, let's say, a less than ideal way. So you can apply these things to yourself. So what's my intention? I want to have a great relation with my kids and being snarky with my kids isn't a way to do that. Because you know what happens with kids is they are snarky back to you. And then you go, hey, don't be snarky. Like, you did it. And you're like, crubba bubba. <laughs> <laughs> I taught you to be snarky. Now I have to own that. And uh, so, you know, just today, I mean, and I, and I had, I, and I had, I sat down with a minute and again, it's that curiosity thing. Like, why, why am I, why am I getting upset? And what is it that I want? What would I prefer to be experiencing this moment? So, you know, look, these principles can apply for you, whether you want a great relation with your kids with your a relationship, if you want to get into a relationship, if you want to find that perfect relationship, if you want a better relationship with your coworkers, with your boss, and if you want to have more influence in the world, these principles are tried and true. And looping back to what you said about being an engineer, like one of the things that I, I really value have, having a background in engineering is I, I think we were trained in problem solving. And a lot of people just identify problems and they just focus on problems, 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 problems. Uh, one of the things I'm thankful, grateful for, and what I liked about what we've gone through in our training is that, look, you identify a problem and then you work on the solution. Mm -hmm. And that's where the magic is. Because you spend all your time, have you ever met people that they, they find problems everywhere? Right. Everything's a problem, right? Right. And then you go, okay, so what are you going to do differently? Oh, there's nothing I can do about it. And they throw up their hands. And what I encourage you is if there's something that's bothering you is to go, okay, what can I do to make a difference. And this is what leaders, high performers, and successful people do. It's all look. about that question you ask yourself. Exactly. Yeah. I agree. And when you do ask, what can I do? How can I solve it? If you start asking that, your mind starts turning. Mm -hmm. And eventually it gets to the point where you want to solve it. Okay. So any problem is not a problem. It's a challenge. It's mm. something to be solved. And there's opportunity somewhere in that so-called problem there's somehow some way that it has the possibility to make things even better yeah there's there's always a learning experience exactly there's always a learning experience so yeah i thank you for sharing that because that's such a key point for people it's like look one of my experiences what can i learn from this and when you adopt that mentality, boy, it, 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 life just changes. And, and just to say, you don't have to be an engineer to be a problem solver. All you have to do is exactly what Adrian was saying, right? You just have to go, wait, all right? I'm not liking this so-called problem or issue or thing that's coming up. I would prefer to have this. And when you do that, your brain goes, okay, well, what would I prefer? You're immediately training your brain to think in what do I prefer and how do I make that happen? And that's where the, honestly, that's where the magic happens, right? And then what are you supposed to do, Adrian? Take action. Exactly. You've got a solution. You've got maybe three, four, five, or 500 steps to get there. Take one. Take exactly. one step forward. Exactly. Right? It reminds me of the feedback exercise that uh, we experienced in the Jack Canfield training mm -hmm. where Basically, Jack, when he takes a step forward, he receives feedback on whether he's on course or off course. And when he starts the exercise, he stands there and he's getting no feedback. If you take no action, you get no feedback. You don't know how to course correct. So we have to take action to, to figure it out. Yeah. Hey, look, you can be successful but just by taking action, but the coupling it with what you want, mm -hmm. right? Those two together. And I have a, a friend of mine, I kind of turn the action guy. He's a professional, uh, he was a professional football player for 13 years. And uh, I love his story. And if you don't mind, I'll share it with you here. Please. Uh, so he only played football as a freshman in high school. And he quit. He was, he self-described as, look, I was, I was, I was, wasn't mature enough for team sports. Because he was a very intelligent guy, kind of a fast processor. And he just couldn't understand why people couldn't understand things. And just like, really. So he's basically a surfer and a martial artist. <clears throat> he's 20 years old. He's going to junior college uh, here in California. He's playing basketball with somebody. He's like, man, you're a phenomenal athlete. You should do something with that. And he's like, 
you know, hmm, maybe I could get them to pay for my college. I'm paying for it by myself. He walks in to the, uh, the, the football coach's office. Mm-hmm. And says, Hi, my name is Glenn Parker. He happens to be 6'6 and 300 pounds. So just, just so you can imagine. He walks in, says, I'm thinking of playing football. What positions should I play? And the coach looks at him and goes, offensive line. He's like, oh, okay, why offensive line? Because I'm the offensive line coach and I'm not an idiot. <laughs> if a 6'6, 300 pound guy is walking through your door saying he wants to play football for you, you're going to make him work for you, not for the defense. So he did that. Two years later, he was the highest recruited junior college transfer in the current in the country where I met him at the University of Arizona. Two years later, he was drafted into the NFL. 13 seasons in the NFL has been to five Super Bowls. He has five championship rings. And so, you know, what I would say is take action. If he hadn't done that one thing, if, if that one person, you should do something with him. Yeah, no, I don't think so. He wouldn't have done that. He would have had a very different, he's actually an announcer now for the Pac-12. His name's Glenn Parker. He also does the pregame show for um, the Arizona Car- Cardinals. Uh, maybe I'll have to get him on your show, Adrian. I think he'd be a, another great person for you to That'd talk. That'd be fantastic. I would love that. You know, uh, but again, but the lesson here is it's about taking action. He said one, his first thing was, hey, uh, maybe it can pay for my college. He had a goal and he took an action towards that. He went in and he could have had the guy because you've never, you've played football as a freshman and you want to walk on. I don't care how big are you. You're, you're crazy. No, he took action. He put a risk. He took a chance and they said, yes. And I'll tell you, he, he tells you his first meeting, he's in the first meeting and they're talking about front side backs and backside blocks. And he's going, I have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> he only played as a freshman. So he had no idea. I love it. Football for how long? But you know what he did? He took another action. He took notes. He said, man, I took 13 pages of notes my first day. And that's how he approached his entire football career. And I remember telling me when I said, well, how did you prep for, uh, for a Super Bowl? He says, I would have the defensive coordinator walk me through the defense every time, and he would visualize him making the perfect play. And so he did, he worked hard. He was a hardworking guy. And uh, he went that, he always went that extra mile. So again, it, you see how all these things kind of come together? Exactly. He had a vision. First, first, his goal was very, what I would say, look, they're going to pay for my college. Mm-hmm. Then it's like, hey, I might get a full scholarship at a four-year college. That's the second goal. Third goal was, hey, maybe I get in the NFL. And his goal was I could pay, make enough money to buy a house on the beach because that's all I wanted. He was a surfer and a martial artist, and he wanted to sur- end a 13-year career in the NFL. So one action, one goal can start moving you in the direction to get the life you deserve. I agree completely. I couldn't have summed it up better. That is perfect. Thank you. And it, it just touches on so many valuable success principle points of taking action, getting feedback, asking for what you want, you know, having the visualizing your goals, you know, maintaining that vision and, and, and the answers will come. If you maintain that vision, the answers will show up. The yeah. steps that you need to take will show up. Are you ready for my notification of the law of attraction? Are you ready for this? I yes, give it to me. <laughs> so this here, and I'm, I'm pointing to my head now. If you're on, if you're on the audio series, your brain is the greatest thinking machine ever created, but you're in charge of the software. And I know there's people who are not in software development, but I bet you can finish this sentence for me. Garbage in, garbage out, garbage out. So when you put those thoughts that aren't, let's say, effective or efficient. In your brain, you get things that aren't effective, efficient in your outcomes. So what, Adrian, what you're talking about, visualization, setting your goals, taking action, all those pieces there are choices you can make. So my business, plug, plug, choice is your superpower. I truly believe that. You get to choose, one, what your goal is, two, what action you're going to take, and three, whether you're going to take responsibility for it. Or visualize it. Are you going to work? Are you going to take those steps? Are you going to take those action steps? Are you not going to be afraid of people, you know, giving you negative feedback? Are you going to take that feedback as just a learning experience? All those kind of things are what successful people do. And just like you, I have a passion to get this, get this message out to people. You know, slap them in the face a little bit, like, hey, oh, wake up, wake up, Marka. You know, this is what's going on. And mm-hmm. truly, this isn't actually very. Let's say it isn't. It isn't well modeled right now in our country by our 
government officials without staying too much with around politics. But I would just say our politicians are good at politics and they're not very good at governance. And they certainly are not particularly great about taking responsibility. No matter what side of the aisle you're on, one side points to the other side, it's all there for it. The other side points right back to them and says it's their fault. Look, that's not what successful people do. Um, and I would encourage you that despite it not being modeled well in, let's say, in our government, that um, it can be modeled well in your life. And one other thing I'd, I'd, I'd like to share with people is that, look, we can change this. Like, I take responsibility for, you know, what's going on in our, our, our government because, I look, we voted for these people. We don't hold them accountable. And maybe, maybe just maybe we should change that idea if we want some kind of different politicians, if we want a different kind of government. So, um, and again, I'm not picking sides here. I'm just saying in general, I'm not real happy with the way things are being done. So what can I do? Um, and this is one of the things that I, I reach out to people. It's like, look, let's take responsibility. Let's, let's get more engineers. Let's get more, you know, stay at home moms. Let's get some people who are, you know, for the people, of the people, by the people. Let's get some people as opposed to just, you know, legal minds and people who've spent their whole life looking yes, at Yes, I agree. Some people that are real people. Yes. <laughs> people who had jobs and knows what it's like and go, hey, wait a second, this doesn't make sense to me, right? Exactly. Yeah. Choice is your superpower. I love it. So yeah. for anybody listening, anybody watching that needs that slap in the face, where should they go, Chris? How can they get in touch with you? Uh, well, there's a website, choicesyoursuperpower.com. That's my website. And then I also have a Facebook page, Choice is Your Superpower. Uh, and I work with a team of, of um, coaches also. So we have different areas. I like the idea of different voices, just like Adrian, what you're doing here, is have different voices of people speaking. Um, sometimes I say things and, and you might resonate with you, but you might hear just the, almost the exact same thing from Adrian. You go, oh my goodness, that, that clicked for me. Uh, so I would encourage you not come reach out to me if you're interested but reach out to adrian like he's again a great voice in this in this kind of transformational leadership space um i'm, I'm really glad to have been on this show with you you know uh I'm, I'm glad that some of the things that we talked about made an impact for you and obviously man you're 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 running with it you've got your own personal desire and drive and i love it i love it love people with the drive and passion thank you chris it's been an honor to have you on my show it's an honor to have you as a friend and um and yes you already been a big inspiration in my life and thank you thank you thank you oh well thank you for having me on again and look let's let's get lunch let's do some dinner let's get together man it's always fun let's do it very soon yes thank you and thanks everybody for watching or listening please reach out to chris for that slap in the face we all need it sometimes take care have an amazing day Chris Neerum was able to go from a boring job to an exciting job as a stand-up comic. Do you know why? Do you know how he was able to do this? Because he took action. Taking action is critical to get what you want out of life. And I want to help you to do that. So I have a free gift for you. Go to thelifeideserve.com slash action to download a simple yet beautiful guide on why it's important to take action and how to do it. Again, thelifeideserve.com slash action. Thanks for listening. You deserve to be happy. You deserve to live a passionate, fulfilling life. Subscribe so we can take this journey together. A journey of sharing, learning, and growing. A journey to the life you deserve.